Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about all the books I want to read this summer and I wanted this video to be so nice and bright and lovely and summery. I was going to wear my cute summery outfit and everything but in true Scottish fashion it's fish and dune, it's Baltic freezing and I couldn't wear anything other than a jumper where it's that cold so we've now got the vibes but oh well I mean what else did I expect really living in the bloody Scotland? <laughs> So yes, as of tomorrow from me filming this, I will be completely finished uni, I'll have submit my final assessment and I'll be done. I will be free until I begin work in September. So I want to do an awful lot of reading and I've got over 40 books picked out that I want to get to this summer and I'm just going to talk to you a bit about them all today, obviously because I've got so many books. I'm going to be keeping it very short, very quick, because we've, we've not got time to go into depth in 40 books. So I think I need to give a bit of context before we start in that at the end of summer when I begin work that will be abroad. I will be moving to France and beginning work there as a teaching assistant. This is part of my degree and I'm very, very excited to be going. However, I cannot bring physical books with me because I'm going to have such limited luggage. So I want to really just make a dent on my TBR this summer. Actually last year I made this challenge for myself, so like if you remember this you're like a real MVP, where I challenged myself to read all the books I had acquired before 2020 and there was like over 50 and I got it down to well it's currently at 13. So I want to complete this over summer and that's the first batch of books I'm going to talk about because honestly if I don't read them this summer, when am I going to read them? I'm not going to have time to read them next year because I'll be abroad and I won't have them. So like, at this point I'll just have to accept that it's not going to happen and probably just ditch them, unhaul them if I don't get to them this summer. But I want to give all of these ones a chance still so I am hoping to at least get that far and yeah let's just talk about them. So first up we have got Rebel of the Sands by Alvin Hamilton. So this is first in the, I think a trilogy and this is just young adult high fantasy you'll find that for a lot of these and I just never picked it up because I was waiting for the sequels to come out and then by the time they came out I wasn't that interested anymore. So this takes place in the kind of desert and you've got a uh, follow a female man character and she's just not in a very good place it's you know not a healthy environment for a woman to be in but when a mysterious traveler comes she has the option to go with him and be part of something bigger and I Honestly, I had to read the synopsis. I could not remember a single thing about this book. So we'll see if I enjoy it. So next up is All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. So this is set during World War II and you follow two perspectives. We've got a blind girl living in France under the occupation and you've got an orphaned boy in Germany who is taken in by the Hitler Youth. And I think their paths in intertwine somehow. I am intrigued and I will be giving this a go. I'm, I just, I have a couple of books like this where they are standalones, there's only a couple standalones, but the ones I've left are because I think that they're going to be sad. And I'm not good with sad books, I say, knowing that I've given several of them five stars. <laughs> I'm intimidated to pick up sad books because I don't like being sad, but then when I do, I end up loving them, so like, hopefully this is good. And then next up is Zenith by Sasha Alsberg and Lindsay Cummings. And this is this like pirates in space and it's an all-female crew and it sounds very good in theory, though I have seen very mixed reviews. Um, this is the first night why sci-fi duology and I bought this back when Sasha was like my favourite booktuber. So a good while ago when this first came out, but then I never read it even though I'd actually read the little sample they released beforehand and I loved it. So who knows? I don't know if I'll love it now. Um, I think I would have loved it if I'd read it when I bought it, which is the lesson I need to learn with most of these books. But I'm intrigued at least. I will give it a go and the audiobook's on Scribbit so I can hopefully just zip through it. <laughs> Next up is Royals by Rachel Hawkins and this one I want your opinion on. I got this, my friend got me it, before I started YouTube because I talked about it to her and I was like I think it'd be really really fun to do a vlog on this one and I'm just like just tear it to shreds because of how it presents Scotland in this really like inauthentic borderline offensive way 
and would you still be interested in that vlog? I don't want to like be mean and tear down books but also I want to make fun of it because like the things that I have heard about how this author has written Scotland is just embarrassing. It's short and I think it'd be a fun vlog so let me know. Um, this follows a teenage girl from America who I think she marries into the Scottish royal family. Oh no, her sister does but then because the press is weird about royal family she gets roped into all the drama. I also kind of want to read this so I can read the spin-off which is sapphic and I don't want to be so harsh on that I want to get all my harshness out on this one and then the other one like I'll still be cringing at the Scottish bits but like it won't be as bad because I've already gotten all my jokes out on this one. Next up I've got Scythe by Neil Schusterman this is another young adult fantasy series, I think a trilogy as well. Another one where I bought the first book but then didn't want to buy the rest of the series so I never picked it up. There's, there is a common theme here and it's that I am too stingy. <laughs> um, so you follow these teenagers taken in as like apprentice sites, which is a very cool concept and I have heard lots and lots of good things about this one so I'm very intrigued. I think of this stack this is one of the ones I'm like I've got the most hope for that I would enjoy it. So. I'm excited to see what the hype is about. And then next is The Book Thief by Market Zusak and this is another one where it's sad and I know it will hurt me and that's been scaring me out of reading it but I mean if you've not heard of this one already it is very 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 well loved. Um, this is another World War II one and it follows a young girl who's stealing books and I really don't know much more beyond that. It's one I want to go into kind of not knowing what to expect if that makes sense except that it is sad <laughs> but I'm excited and intimidated. Next up is The Queen of the Deerling by Erica Johansson and I've literally still got the price tag on it but this is another YA fantasy in the beginning of a series. This was another one that was just very popular back in the day and then I found it cheap in a charity shop, 99p apparently and I was like you know what I'll give it a try and then never picked it up but this was a girl who's taken back to her place of birth on her 19th birthday and given her kind of rightful place which is queen to a kingdom and this kingdom it's corrupt it's debauched and she's either got to figure out how to rule it and control it or she's gonna die and I'm very intrigued by the concept it it does seem very basic YA fantasy but excited to see what it's like and give this one a try as well. Next up we have got The Edge of Everything by Jeff Giles and I can honestly tell you I don't really know what this is about. <laughs> um, I, I read the synopsis but it, it doesn't make sense but I believe that a boy and a girl meet and that they have feelings for each other but they have to risk things which is a very very basic plot concept that we've all seen a million times before so I'm intrigued by what makes this one different but yeah honestly not really got an idea of what this is about and I do remember that there's a mid-series cover change um, and that's why I didn't pick it up because I wouldn't be able to get in this cover which yeah that checks out that seems very on brand for me so we'll give it a try got no idea what it's about though <laughs> Next up we have got Everless by Sarah Holland and this one is just another YA fantasy and this is I believe the first one duology. In this world time is money and well currency and you can give years off of your life for exchange for things and our main character does something interesting with this. Again I just I do not know Again, intrigued by the kind of concept of the fantasy world, that's what sold me on this back in the day and maybe I'll just finally pick this one up, hopefully. And finally from this wee stack we have got Caraval by Stephanie Garber. So this is the first in a YA trilogy, it's circus themed and it does sound quite good still to me. Um, I just need to hurry up and read it. Right, so next up I have got some ARCs. So ARCs are advanced readers copies, these are copies of a book that are sent out in exchange for a review prior to publication to generate some hype. I know that I talk about ARCs a lot recently so I just wanted to kind of 
clarify that because I know a lot of people won't know what it means. I certainly didn't until I started requesting them last year. So yeah, that's what they are. I have got several <laughs> because there's so many books releasing on the 1st of June and I still need to read all of them. So the first of these I want to talk about is The Love Song of Ivy K. Harlow by Hannah Moskowitz. So this is a YA contemporary and we follow a main character called Andy and she is in love with her best friend Ivy. But she knows she's never got a chance with her and the Ivy's this kind of like one night stand kind of girl. She just doesn't do serious relationships. But when she does the unthinkable and she keeps seeing this one girl and developing real feelings, this, this causes a bit of turmoil for Andy and we kind of work through her feelings from what I can tell and I'm just very, very hyped, very excited. Next up I have got The Passing Playbook by Isaac Fitzsimons. So this is another wine contemporary and we follow a trans teen who has a fresh start at a new school following some transphobic bullying and goes stealth. But when his coach is forced to bench him from the soccer team following him discovering the F on our main character's birth certificate, he has to choose between coming out and fighting for his right to play or just continuing to go stealth and to cheer his team on from the sidelines. And this one sounds so good, so fun. It's one I'm really, really anticipating and cannot wait to read. Next up, I have got Where We Go From Here by Lucas Rocca. And this is actually translated. It's translated by Larissa Helena. So this was originally written in Portuguese and it takes place in Brazil following three gay young adults who have all had their lives intertwined in the face of HIV. One's been diagnosed, one's just tested negative, and the other one's been already been living with it for three years. So yes, this is one I've been very much looking forward to, and so when I saw an ARC available I just snapped that up, and I just cannot wait to pick it up. Very, very excited. This is actually really interesting to me as well because it's translated fiction and that's something I've been wanting to read more of, so I'm just very much overall excited. <laughs> Next up I've got 1500 Miles from the Sun by Johnny Gartha Villa and this sounds so damn good. Uh, this is a YA contemporary as well. So this follows a boy who accidentally comes out on Twitter while very very drunk <laughs> and he'd been planning on keeping this very much secret and you know he's kind of like my life's gonna fall apart now but um, a lovely Twitter stranger who he has a crush on slides into his DMs and this begins this like cute long distance relationship so I know this has just got like best friendships, it's got this lovely long distance pining, you know, it's soccer gaze. And also we have got some Latina culture. I believe our main character is of uh, Mexican heritage, so there's like some Chicane culture and heritage here and I am very very excited to read this as well. Next up we have got Ace of Spades by Frida Vique Mieri. I am so beyond hype for this one. This is Dark Academia, it's a thriller, it explores institutional racism because we're set in this like private school and it's very very white and rich people and all of that and so just excited. It is also sapphic. Um, we follow both the perspective of a girl and a boy in this school. They're both black and both being threatened by this anonymous texter and I believe that they are both queer so very very excited for that as well. I've had a few friends read it and adore it so I'm just pumped. So excited. And then next is Meet Cute Diary by Emery Lee. This is a trans rom-com and it's got fake dating and the best friendships and I'm very very excited. It's all just about like trans joy and pumped for that. So so excited. We follow Noah who runs this blog of like trans happily ever afters but when this is exposed as being fake and like fictional he decides to fake date to create this real happily ever after you can write about even though it's actually fake which is very convoluted but I'm very very excited to pick this one up it sounds so good I've seen so many people love it already this comes out in June in the UK but it's actually already out in the States and everywhere so you can buy it and my final June arc, I was not kidding about having heaps of them, is Gearbreakers by Zoe Hanamakuta. And guys, I'm so, 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 so excited. <laughs> so this is cyberpunk sapphics. So this is set in this like world where these giant mechas are, are they ruling? I don't know, but they're like bad <laughs> and killing people. And, and so we followed two girls on opposite sides of a war who realize that they have a common purpose and we join this team of gear breakers who are people who take down these mechas and there's 
just sapphic angst and found family and like tattooing your girlfriend which oh, so excited I've been following Zoe for a while she's just the loveliest and I'm just hyped to finally read it next up we have got there's magic between us by Jillian Maria and the author was kind enough to send me this one and it sounds right up my alley so it's sapphic <laughs> which yeah that's my alley and so we follow a city girl and she's spending like a week with her grandma in a small town and her mother just absolutely detested this town and couldn't bear to be there but she's and she's warned her daughter to stay out of the woods and so when she goes into the woods <laughs> she meets another girl there who claims to be hunting for fairy treasure and these two obviously begin this kind of relationship and we find out like is there something actually wrong with the woods that her mother's warned her about you know what's going on is this magic real and I'm very very excited because I love woodsy low-key magical kind of stories so I'm very very excited and I've read like the first chapter and um, before I accepted the arc just to see if I'd like it and it's, it's very good I'm very very excited to read it next up we've got the unpopular vote by Jasper Sanchez so this follows the son of a prominent politician and he's trans and has to keep this secret but when this horrible bigot is running for student body president and seems to be winning he decides to run against him and have this kind of like underdog beat the horrible bigot kind of story and I'm very very excited about it as well it just sounds so good and wholesome and also like challenging the system which is always fun so excited to read this one too and next up we have got Love and Other Natural Disasters by Misa Sugiura so this one I am beyond excited for this is like the sapphic summer rom-com it's messy sapphic so we've got these four characters and we follow Nozomi who is going to be fake dating this girl she'd had a crush on for a while to help this girl get back at her ex but you know things are complicated feelings are messy and there may be a chance for love she's not planned for and I am reading that as falling for the wrong person but there's like a part of my love quadrangle between these four girls which my jam I'm so 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 excited for this one I just cannot wait to pick it up and then next up for a couple of August releases I have we have got The Dead in the Dark by Courtney Gold so this is lesbian ghost hunters in a small town and what more do you want? Genuinely what more could you want with, than that? So yeah <laughs> that, that's it it's just this like thriller horror set in this small town this isolated some like bad things happening bad things haunting and a new girl shows up in town the daughter of TV ghost hunters and has to work with the golden girl to kind of solve these happenings and come to the bottom of it all and they're both lesbians and I love that <laughs> so much very 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 excited to read it I've heard such good things next up is A Lesson in Vengeance by Victoria Lee I just want a giveaway for this I'm beyond pumped this is Dark Academia Lesbians and I am hyped so 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 hyped so this is a dark twisty atmospheric thriller about a boarding school haunted by its history of witchcraft and two girls dangerously close to digging up the past like more what more could you want i'm so so excited just lesbians in dark academia apparently they have elbow patches and like i'm very hyped i cannot wait for this one so 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 glad i was able to win that giveaway so yeah that was my kind of like priority list those arcs and those older books so next up i've got three more older books but these ones are all still incompleted series so I've put these as not as huge a priority but I do definitely still want to try and get to them so the first of these is Stealing Snow by Danielle Page the sequel to this keeps being pushed back it was meant to be like 2017 and now it's like 2023 or something like that so I'm a bit scared it's never gonna get finished which is why it's on this pile but this is like YA Frozen and that's what sold me on it back in the day and I don't know anything else about it but very excited to see if the author will ever finish the series and also excited to give it a try. Next up is The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. I bought this in my last year of school because I was considering reading it to do my dissertation on for English and I never got around to it because it's a lot bigger than I expected and then I discovered that the actual series wasn't completed so I was like oh fuck that then so now I've just got it <laughs> but I do want to finally try and give this a go I'm not convinced I'm going to like it because it is adult fantasy and it's kind of dense but excited anyway yeah I don't really remember what it's about I think 
What did I pick it out for to study about it? Something to do with the narrator? I kind of mind actually, but I am intrigued. I This is the one I've probably got the most doubts about on this list, but we'll see. Next up I have got Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adeyemi. So this is the first in a Y fantasy series. It draws on Western African like folklore and culture and I'm very very intrigued. This book got so much love when it came out and then I saw a lot of people disappointed with the sequel which really put me off especially as this is an, an incompleted series so like there's just the sequel now there's no more books so far so I am a bit intimidated by it just in case I love this one and hate the sequel like everyone else seemed to and also because like if I love it then I'll just have to wait for more books to come but yes I'm very excited to actually give this one a try it sounds very good just you know, like rising up against the oppressor that's a kind of vibe I'm getting so far and I'm very very excited about it so the other thing I kind of want to prioritize but I'm not sure about is another arc that I've got that doesn't release until later in the year and that is If This Gets Out by Sophie Gonzalez and Kale Dietrich but this follows two boys who are part of this like a really big boy band and they're secretly dating they but they are not allowed to make their relationship public and I've seen so many people already love it so I'm very very excited I've also seen a lot of people compare it to One Direction and just call it fan fiction and like I was never a huge fan of One Direction I do not know the lore but I'm gonna assume that it's not <laughs> but even if it is I wouldn't realize because I don't know shit about One Direction but yes very very excited about this one too but it doesn't release until November so like it's not a priority for me we'll see and finally I have some books on my own to TBR that I want to get to I this is not an exhaustive list I want to get to like all of them I'm very excited about them all and there's even like there's books that I don't yet own that I really want to read this summer but I'm not including in this video there's just there's a lot of books I want to read okay the first of these is Loveless by Alice Oseman I want to read some more Oseman prose novels so I've chosen this one to represent them but I do want to read her others I own them so hopefully this follows an ROA's teenager who's in like her first year of uni and discovering this identity and why she doesn't feel the same as others and I am very very excited this is very very well loved so I want to love it too. Next up we've got a recent purchase and that is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. Again I'm very very excited this is a book that I picked out well an author I picked out that I wanted to read this year so I'm gonna have to keep my promises there and it just sounds very very good I'm very hyped. This follows two sisters who I think are just finally put in contact with each other following their dad's death We've got one living in the Dominican Republic and one in New York City, one sapphic and it's just grief and healing and family and it sounds very very good, it's told in verse. I'm excited. Next up is one I've been saying that I want to read and I will finally read for a good while. So that is The Henna Wars by Deba J. Gardar. I, once these arcs are done, like the pressing arcs are done, this is my top priority. I, I want to finally read it. I'm very very excited so this is a YA contemporary we follow a main character called Nishat who is navigating her identity as a lesbian and as a Muslim when she is told that Muslim girls cannot be lesbians it's just not possible but she's having growing feelings for her rival a girl called Flavia in her school because they both run rival henna businesses for this like school fair and I am so 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 excited this book is just so well loved and I can't wait to love it myself. Next up is Honey Girl by Morgan Rogers. This is another one I'm just desperate to read because it's so well loved and I want to love it too. So this is a new adult kind of book. It's contemporary and we follow Grace who has just completed her PhD. She's like very uptight, straight A, not the type to get married in Vegas to a stranger but she does and when her life is just getting very very difficult and pressures are building she goes and she spends the summer falling in love with her new life with her new wife in New York and I am beyond hyped for this one I cannot wait it's only tiny so hopefully it won't take me long but I, just, I cannot, cannot stress enough how much I'm desperate to read this book next up is Late to the Party by Kelly Quinn Lynn I am planning on filming a vlog of reading this and her other books and I'm just very excited to read it and to love it and 
this is, it's gonna be so good i'm so ready for this like sapphic achillean solidarity um i'm a bit of a gut punch i'm, I'm expecting this follows a main character who's like a bit of a wallflower, a bit of an outsider, but she's taken it under the wing of the popular boy when they both realise that they're both gay and just has like summer fun and romance and oh, very, very, very excited. And then next up are some fantasy books on my TBR that I want to read because um, I think I'm getting back into a fantasy mood. You know, I read all but one of the books I read in April were fantasy and I really loved that i had four and five star reads so i'm hoping that means i'm back in the mood so i want to pick up some of these so the first of these books i want to talk about is we hunt the flame by hamza faisal so this is a YA fantasy first in a duology and it's set in this fantasy world inspired by ancient arabia so you follow two point of views a girl and a boy the girl is a huntress she is hunting to like feed people like robin hood kind of style and you follow a boy who's the prince, he's the son of a sultan, and he is assassinating those who stand in his father's way. And they somehow come together, and I'm very, very excited about this. It sounds very good, it's so well loved, and I want to love it myself as well. And then next is We Set the Dark on Fire by Taylor K. Mejia. This is Latini inspired, this fantasy world where this girl who has been attending this like proper private school a proper young woman to get you into proper society on a false pedigree is offered this choice between continuing living this line risking discovery or assisting the resistance and helping bring the society down and i'm so excited for this this is sapphic and oh, beyond excited about this i've heard amazing things this is again the first in a duology and chef's kiss can't wait to read it <laughs> And then next is The Never Tilted World by Rinchi Peko. So this is like Mad Max meets Frozen is how it's described and it's a vibe. So in this kind of world that's been divided by global warming and climate, you've got this really cold, deserty, coldy place and then this really warm, hot, deserty place and a sister ruling over each one. They're like almost like goddess-like and you follow the two of them doing stuff. I can't remember quite what they actually have to do. I think they are trying to like, unite the world. But what is what has excited me is one of these girls is sapphic. We've got a lovely sapphic romance. The other one, I believe the other ones, we've got like a bodyguard princess trope, which I enjoy an awful lot. So I'm excited about that as well. So like, I'm excited about the fantasy and the political and all of that, but you know I'm here for the romance for most of these. Oh, what can I say? I like a bit of romance in my books. And by a bit, I mean a lot. <laughs> Next up, we have got The Dark Tide by Alicia Jacinka. And you know what I said just, just literally seconds ago about wanting some romance with my fantasy? This is this is why I have this. So in this world, we've got this like dark witch queen character and every year she will take a boy back to her palace. But this year, a girl who has some feelings for this boy that's chosen, she volunteers herself. And as the witch queen and this girl kind of wait out full moon and bad things happening, they end up growing feelings for each other. And I hear that this is just like the soft character and the dark character and like so excited for their dynamic. I've heard the greatest things and this is actually a standalone as well. So very, very excited to pick it up myself. It sounds so good. And then next is Sweet and Bitter Magic by Adrienne Tooley. So this is a fairly new release. It's sapphic, it's witches, it's enemies to lovers, it's grumpy sunshine. I am sold, so beyond sold. I, I cannot wait to read this, it's just it's gorgeous. So these these two women, one is a witch and one is not, and they have to kind of reluctantly team up to try and save the other one's father. And I'm so hyped, it sounds so good, cannot wait. This is again, another standalone and I do love a standalone fantasy book because I recently I do not have the attention span for series <laughs> but I've also been craving those like really long like six seven book series like you know, like Throne of Glass or Mortal Instruments like these series that you could just read so long and be so completely in the world I've been missing that feeling but I can't think of any that I really want to read so yes, I am simultaneously no attention span, cannot do anything more than a single book. We need some contemporary and also 
I want this big sprawling series. So yeah, there's no logic in here. Next up is A Song of Wraiths and Ruin by Roseanne A. Brown. So this is inspired by Western African mythology and folklore. And this is like first in, I think, a trilogy. And it sounds very, very good. We've got enemies to lovers and a magical competition. I Again, this is another one I've kind of acquired on hype and don't know a huge amount about beyond that but what more could I want? It sounds very very good, it is so well loved and I'm very excited to pick it up for myself. And finally from this wee stack of my potential fantasy marathon we have got Rule of Wolves by Lee Bardugo. I want to finish the last Grishaverse book, that's it. <laughs> yeah so this is the final book and I want to read it and to be done with the series and I've somehow managed to avoid being spoiled so would like to keep it that way and read this one pretty soon, especially as I am in a bit of a Grishaverse mood because of the show. So yes, excited to read this one. It's a sequel to King of Scars and some like shit went down in that book so I'm excited to see how it wraps up here. And finally, just very very quickly, there are four books that I kind of want to reread this summer so I'm going to talk to you about them now. First up is The Falling in Love Montage by Kira Smith. So if you don't already know, this is my favourite book of all time and I would like to reread it. I have a paperback copy as well and I want to read that one and just like annotate it and I'm very excited to do that. If you'd like to see a video of that, whether it's me in the process of annotating it or going back and flicking through, whatever, let me know. I'm very excited to reread it though and to be back with my best girls because it's been like a year since I read them and I miss them. <laughs> And then next I want to reread One Last Stop by Casey McKiston. I read this back in October last year so it's been a while and with the book releasing on the 1st of June and hopefully lots of people being hyped about it I know that I'm going to miss them more than I already do so I want to reread. <laughs> hopefully I'll actually have a finished copy by then and I can reread that and I don't think there'll be huge differences between that and this but I want to and I'm very 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 excited. I just I love this book so much as well. It's so good and it better get all of the hype and love it deserves like if it does not get as big as red white and royal blue then i will be judging people because it deserves it so much next up i want to continue with my aquater series reread i've already reread the first book and i want to read these ones and i will eventually be purchasing the new one aquater silver flames but i wanted to reread these first again i've somehow avoided spoilers and would like to keep it that way so this will hopefully be a bit of a priority once i get through my june arcs but listen, this was like my favourite back in the day. Well, Throne of Glass was my favourite, but close second. And I'm very excited to just be back with the world, even though I definitely don't love it nearly as much as I did then. I can definitely see a lot more of the problems. I just wasn't aware of things. I didn't read quite so critically, but still love them. Excited to be back. And the final book I want to talk about, the final book I want to reread is Cinderella's Dead by Callum Bayron. So I read an arc of this last summer and I just, I wasn't, overwhelmed but I believe that my arc copy was dodgy because well for one there's no formatting no chapters no page breaks nothing it's just one long stream of text which is odd to read it's not that enjoyable but also just when you compare the reviews of people who like me had read a digital copy and those who had read physical or final copies there was like there's such a huge difference in the reviews I think we must have gotten like an older draft so I'm just very intrigued to see if I would enjoy it more on a reread and my friend's got a copy and she adored it so I'm going to borrow that because I trust her taste and also as I really do want to love this story I want to give it another chance because it sounds very good. It's set uh, 300 years after the death of Cinderella in this horrible patriarchal society where girls have to go to a ball to be chosen by a suitor and we follow a sapphic main character who absolutely does not want to do that she wants to run away with her girlfriend but her girlfriend's not quite so willing to risk almost certain death. But our main character, Sophia, she meets the last living descendant of Cinderella's family and together they kind of work to uncover the true story of Cinderella and take down the patriarchy. And I'm hyped to reread it and hopefully love it. But yes, I believe this video has already been way longer than I planned, so I will keep this short. I just want to say a huge thank you for watching. Let me know if you've read and loved any of these. Give me some motivation, please. And as always, you will find Goodreads links for all of these books down below in case you're interested in any of them. You'll find my social media links if you want to keep up with me elsewhere. My bookshop affiliate link if you fancy 
but funding your own book buying problem and helping fund mine as well and supporting independent bookstores and the environment because they're carbon neutral and yes thank you very 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 much for watching i hope you've enjoyed and i'll see you with another video soon